let's get started with uh, Chuen and Friends Part 2. Good, so this is our op opportunity to invite in the cetacean energies of the group. Uh, this is the humpback whale. Uh, doing a little uh, spy hopping there. And uh, we'll also invite in dolphin. The dolphin energy. They can all come to join us. And here's the uh, first watercolor I did from our first New Moon Zoom meeting. And there's our, our group in the pod. And uh, Dwayne's leading us in playing uh, the guitar and music to the cetaceans. And so now we can board the, uh, the yellow submarine and, and off we go with uh, Chuen and Friends 2. And uh, that's the Monkey Artists and Tricksters Temple. And the last moon presentation, I did a lot about the trickster. And this one will be more about the artists. So during the last uh, moon, after the last moon presentation, I was doing research for this one. And uh, this guy showed up. And this is uh, Ishu, he's uh, from West Africa. He's a trickster messenger. I'd never heard of him before, but he's very popular. Uh, he's the trickster messenger. He's cunning, rebellious, and defies authority. And it sounds very familiar. <laughs> uh, I read his story. And he's about uh, conflict, and he actually creates chaos. And one example is he there's a pathway between two farms, and two farmers notice him walking along this pathway, and he's got he's created on one side of himself a white hat, and then on the other side of himself he's got a black hat. And the farmers are seeing the two colors and they start to argue over what color his hat is. And that just shows the, they're seeing something from the different perspective and uh, they'll argue over it to be right. And um, they'll attack each other. And uh, it just, they just start to display their stupidity. So that was new learning for me about uh, Eshu, E S H U. <clears throat> so now we'll go to the uh, Uranus time beam. Uh, we start a new one here in 2007. And uh, I painted this at the beginning of that for my dad, who had a St. Francis sculpture in the garden. And uh, a synchronicity of events would begin after this painting and presenting it to him. <clears throat> and it started in the gold rush country of California, where we were traveling in uh, Coloma, where gold was discovered in the foothills. And that's where you hear about the 49ers. That's where they discovered gold in the Sierra Nevada. And uh, Sophia and I, we broke camp on the American River and uh, we went to a beautiful coffee shop on on the river and on the just off the the road and uh, we had wonderful coffee and homemade muffins and uh, it was a place with an outdoor setting it had a grape arbor over top it was just this beautiful setting and all the smells and uh, we were sitting at a table of two next to a railing and it was so beautiful. 
And this was uh, during our four year travels through the West. And we were reading along the journey, The Wisdom of the Ages by Wayne Dyer. And that was um, a collection of wise thoughts from different uh, masters from the past. And we we're sitting at the table and I opened up in the chapter that I was reading. It was about the prayer of St. Francis. And the part where it's, you know, make me an instrument of peace. And while we were sharing this prayer, right next to us, this three-ton delivery truck pulled right up next to us, like it, I could have reached out and touched it. And when I looked up at the side of the truck as I was reading this, the truck said, Francis Distributing. <laughs> and uh, we were awestruck by what we were seeing and, and feeling. And this was a confirmation that, uh, you know, Sophia was friends with my dad and I had made peace with my dad uh, and we were traveling and uh, my dad had a military background and he was major dad and I had a rebellious anti-Vietnam War background, but I listened to his story and it was it was what he knew and it got him off the farm when he joined the army to escape his uh, his crazy stepmother. And of course, I didn't agree with some of it, but I had made peace with it. And in this tile, this is in a CC, it says Pax et Bonum. And uh, that means uh, peace is peace and all good. And I felt that I'd made peace and things were all good between me and my dad. And he also, there's a story of St. Francis uh, feeding the wolf. And there's that story, of course, looking at which, which wolf do I feed, the good wolf or the bad wolf. So our uh, four years of travel were, were coming to an end and we were at the start of the the new time beam, and uh, we moved from Laughlin, Nevada to Henderson in the Las Vegas Valley. And from there, one valley over to the west is the old Spanish trail. This is the old Spanish trail that came across. And as you can see, they just paved over the trail. And this is how they, the wagons would use the switchbacks to get up and over. And there was just nothing, you know, there was no people out there. It was just fascinating to sit out there and uh, feel the vastness and observe the, the Mojave rattlesnakes. And uh, we had discovered this one valley over from Death Valley was uh, this little village of Tacopa. And they had this uh, beautiful hot springs there, these buildings that were uh, all whitewashed, but they had open, they were uh, walled pools. So you had privacy, but the top, there was nothing up top. So at night you could sit in the desert and just see the stars <laughs> in this hot pool. And uh, <clears throat> It was a very beautiful place that we frequented quite often uh, living in the in the Las Vegas Valley. But on our journeys, we also discovered the world of rocks and and gems. And here we found this uh, crystal, and it was there to remind us to uh, travel light. So we just bought uh, small small uh, gems to, to carry with us.
and this they, had, they had put a value on this thing. They were supposed to sell it to the Wynn Hotels for five hundred thousand, but there was uh, the Wynn Hotels had changed their minds, so this was just kind of sitting in storage. And we were able to enjoy the the wisdom of the uh, bristlecone pines. These are like twenty five hundred years old, so they've they've lived through a lot. And this is just uh, the mountains surrounding the Las Vegas Valley. And this is Mount Charleston, which is the highest peak. It's at 12,000 feet. And this is a whole bristle cone forest. And we had hiked up, and it was a beautiful blue sky day. And suddenly, we found ourselves uh, following the lightning path because it turned into this major lightning and thunderstorm and we were, there was really nowhere to hide and we were walk, walking our way down and just like strikes of lightning everywhere. And it was just actually very empowering. And uh, we just stayed on the path and these lightning strikes were happening. And uh, we were in that for about 45 minutes. So after our travels and uh, sitting in meditation and serving, we decided, well, what's next? And uh, if opportunity doesn't knock, we'll build a door. And somebody's attributed this to Milton Berle, but I don't know about, can't believe everything on the internet. Uh, they were building a a new hotel a block from our apartment, and so I went in and they hired me, and they were just starting it. So I helped create this hotel from inertia, and it was really quite magical to see how that unfolded. Now, this isn't the hotel. This was me as a front desk manager or night manager, which I was, this is the Hotel California in Baja, California. So I staged a, a front desk invite. And uh, actually that's uh, one of my favorite lyrics ever is from the Eagles Hotel California, where it says, relax, said the night man, you are programmed to receive. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. And for me, that's we're programmed to desire and craving and even addiction. But uh, we can check out and stop the addiction, but that temptation is always there. It never leaves. But it was just a beautiful hotel. And uh, just these these colors, there were in the photos, other photos, there were orbs everywhere. It was just a very magical place. And uh, I actually really enjoyed being in service in the in the hotel industry for close to four years. And uh, that profession was about uh, giving to the guests and uh, creative ways to give to the guests. And I really enjoyed that. And uh, Sophie and I had decided when we did this work that uh, we would be on the other side of the counter. So I was, we had experienced being the customers. So now we were on the other side. And uh, Sophia worked at uh, Starbucks and uh, I did this mandala for her. That looks like a nice chocolate latte of some sort. And uh, she was the reliable employee that could show up at 4 a.m. and open the store. And uh, this uh, gave us an opportunity to cover our medical insurance, which is not health insurance in America. It's uh, it's cover your ass assets insurance from the medical complex. And moving along the time beam, uh, I met a guest in the hotel and she invited us up to Anchorage and said, yeah, I got all the rain gear. I got everything come, come up there. And we 
we uh, went to Homer, Alaska, and we were on the pier, and this guy came up to us and said, oh, they only need two more people to, to go on this whale watching. Can you come? We said, yeah, as long as you give us the senior discount. And uh, we got on, and here was this amazing uh, feeding frenzy that we uh, we got to be part of and witness. And uh, we purchased this from the professional photographer who was on board. This is one of my favorite photos ever. There just seems a rhythm there. And this one where they're spouting and also the uh, the volcano is, is steaming in the background. <laughs> that was a pretty magical experience. Then after that, we decided we'd uh, we'd move to Texas. I never thought we'd move to Texas. It, uh, but I appreciated the live music in Austin. It was uh, where a lot of uh, music genres come together there, from New Orleans to to gospel and the blues. But the environment uh, is very harsh. Uh, there's a lot of bugs in Texas, a lot of snakes, and a lot of bullshit. But Austin's a very creative place, and we had one of it had one of the best TCM schools, traditional Chinese medicine, and that's where Sophia decided that she wanted to go. That was our reason for moving there. So Sophia studied and graduated. Uh, summa cum laude from the from the uh, acupuncture university there, and uh, and she set up a successful practice in Austin for three years, and uh, I supported that. And at the same time, I was studying the Bach flower remedies. We went to England and uh, visited Doctor Bach's office and his cottage, and the work that he did with Bach flowers. And uh, then the main artistic thing that came to us was the uh, 1008 Buddha project, which uh, started in, in actually in Las Vegas. Um, Sophia had given away this beautiful painting, the one down here in the bottom of kind of the orange and red and yellow. And I said, oh, I love that painting, but I could always duplicate it, duplicate it. So I duplicated it on a six by six canvas. I said, wow, that was fun. And I started to do some more of these. I did 15 of them. Then all of a sudden, uh, the National Geographic for that month came and it was about the caves in Don Huang, China and the cave painters. Suddenly I felt like I was this old cave painter and I had put these paint, these uh, six by six with push pins on the wall. I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. And then uh, we moved to Austin and then I started to create the 1008 Buddha project. And uh, Sophia said she would support me in it and other artists I knew said they'd support me in it. And this is panel number one. And here is, uh, I did the Tierra de Fuego. This is panel 34. And at that time, uh, I was in Austin, but I connected somehow with Dwayne through the uh, axis of equal and uh, egg, balance, egg balancing, and we connected that way. And he uh, shared with me about the, uh, uh, the moon phases and Dwayne wanted to contribute a painting. So he, he sent uh, 
a Buddha traveling to uh, the caves, which we called it. We had uh, Buddhas traveling from all over the world. And this is Dwayne's contribution. The, it's a little fuzzy in my picture, but Dwayne contributed this one. And it's in uh, panel number six up at the top right. And uh, yeah, there were Buddhas suddenly arriving from all over the world. Uh, it ended up in uh, from 11 countries and 81 artists contributed to it. And Duane suggested the phases of the moon book. So I was studying that. And uh, then I created panel number 18. I did all the phases. And uh, kind of learned about the colors and the, of each phase. This was the jig I created to make the panels. And we just turned our living room into the, the art studio. And there were some finished panels there. And then eventually all 36 panels were hanging in our apartment, which we called the cave. We could just really feel the energy of, uh, of the world, really, of sending their, their Buddhas to meditate together. So they, they did that for two years on the wall. Of course, with Chen, I needed to include a a monkey, a howler monkey Buddha with a couple of scarlet macaws. And here was another axis of equal contribution, but at that time I didn't know any connection about Duane and cetaceans, but I had put that one Buddha out there to be behind the balancing of the egg. We had a curious uh, little uh, lizard there. There's another. Close up. Here's another Buddha in the ocean. I just wanted to show a variety of some of the Buddhas that I painted. This one's titled Bhikkhus Guard Your Senses. So guarding oneself from uh, too much media or uh, some of the uh, fiction that's going on out there. And this is the uh, the great the great scientist, Buddha. And at the time, uh, this is the pagoda in just uh, southeast of Dallas. And Sophia and I went each year while we lived there. For seven years, we go and uh, do 10 day Vipassana meditations. Beautiful pagoda. And uh, We sat there and uh, we did a, a 20 day sit. It was our last sit there. I, Sophia sat and I served. <clears throat> and I wanted to put this in here. Here's a, a I did a mini TED talk to 150 people. <clears throat> and uh, 25 years earlier, I'd done a facilitator development course. And the uh, the uh, lead uh, facilitator gave me feedback that, uh, well, your presentations would be good if you were doing meditation uh, presentations. He was one of these upbeat, high-powered guys. and But it came true. I did a meditation presentation and uh, did the history of uh, meditation in Texas.
And here's uh, my Buddha meditating in one of the cells in the pagoda. And here I am going to uh, meditation at 4.30 in the morning. And this is one of Sophia's, uh, it's her medicine Buddha. And so those Buddhas got together and uh, decided it was time to return to Canada. Uh, I had talked to the regional teacher there and they said, well, they need help with a center up in Vancouver Island. So that's why we decided to return to Canada and move to uh, Vancouver Island. And when we arrived, here's their, uh, here's their Dhamma Hall. And it had a nice wood stove and sat about uh, 20 people. And it was on 139 acres out in Lake Cowichan. And when we arrived, we said, okay, well, we'll, we had moved a house onto the property and this was gonna be the Dhamma house. And uh, the inside needed finishing. So Sophia and I, volunteered to stay there for 45 days and serve, clean up the mess, paint the inside, uh, build beds. And uh, it was all ready to start 10 day courses for uh, uh, either all male or all female courses. And it, when that happened, Uh, this was the inside the the uh, small Dhamma hall we made for inside the Dhamma house. And one of the old students, he would uh, do service work on this property. And this property was in is in Duncan. And this is the poor Claire's monastery which magically is tied to the Franciscans and they decided to sell this and they uh, were going to move across the street because the Franciscan fathers were moving to Vancouver and they were going to move into their house which was 5,000 square feet and there were only five nuns left in this 12,000 square feet and so they put it up for sale and they had uh, three bids on it and the realtors of the other bids were saying, oh, these meditating people, they'll never have the money. Sophia and I, we were on the trust and uh, it was put out to the Vipassana world. And in a week, we uh, raised one and a half million dollars. And uh, the nuns were praying for us and we bought the property. And it's 13 beautiful acres with uh, this 12,000 built to uh, the Catholic Church building standards. So it's quite a property. And uh, we were able to get that like for the price of a, a home. That was in 2018. <clears throat> and then suddenly I had to build not 10 beds, but uh, 32 beds to get us up and running. And this was the chapel that we took everything out. And that is now the Dhamma Hall in Dhamma Modena. And after all that work, we decided that we're Pacific Islanders now, and it was time to go to the visit the other South Pacific Islands. So we went down to uh, Tahiti and Bora Bora and uh, traveled with uh, catamaran and we were on this netting as we went out and there were all these, this pod of dolphins accompanying us all the way out into the open water. And uh, there they are finished playing. And that was just powerful. Like we were over them and they were just swimming along. Here's a picture of Sophia flying with the dolphins energy.
And then we decided in 2019, we had a goal to uh, visit a meditation center in Switzerland. We have a friend that lives there. And also at the same time, we wanted to, there was this, uh, this guest house coffee place up on the cliff. We always wanted to visit that, so we hiked up to that. <clears throat> that was a goal achieved. And then this is the uh, Swiss Meditation Center. And uh, we sat and served there. It's just a very beautiful, beautiful center. And on that same trip, we decided then to visit uh, Assisi. And here's a chalk drawing in front of uh, one of the churches of uh, St. Francis and St. Clair, which were the nuns that uh, that uh, wanted us to have the meditation center. And we visited this uh, church in the valley. This is uh, St. Francis's original church that he built. And it's inside the cathedral now. That's what he originally built. What I learned, there's the there's the city, the uh, city of Assisi. Sophia and I walked across the valley, and uh, there's the Church of Saint Francis on the left hand side in the monastery. And this is the walk up to, and this is very artistic illusion. Those look like steps, but it's actually flat. What I learned on that trip is that uh, all the artisans, all the artists, all the craftsmen, the woodworkers, the painters, the sculptors, they all worked for the church. They're all employed through the church. And I feel we need a, a new renaissance of artists and new material uh, to go out to the world. And uh, here's an axis of equal in our uh, new home on the island. And then here's uh, another six by six painting of, uh, to me represents kind of zoom and the connection of all the other meditators in the world. That's really happening now through Zoom. And uh, I'm doing the, let's go back to that one where I'm connecting with uh, through positive intelligence, um, offering the, the core program online. And it's been a lot of fun and a lot of learning. And uh, we really enjoy ourselves on the island with the forests and the water and the beaches. And we have a very special tree there. It's a monkey puzzle tree and it's got some very interesting fruit. And so here are Steve and Sophia on the island. And that brings us to the twin. And that's it. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Inspiring. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. 
That's that's oh, with, yeah. As with last time, Steve, I I just feel speechless, <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed, speechless. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's a bit of what's going on in the Temple of Twin, <clears throat> and uh, it just. To go back and uh, revisit what has happened and see the art artists and the trickster parts of it all has been really fascinating. Really fun. Mm -hmm. just, you, you've done it so well. I mean, I, I, I mean, my uh, my heart and soul. It feels like my heart and soul has journeyed mm -hmm. with you. This journey you've presented is just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you know when it's time to move on? How do you know? Yeah. How do you know? You get. It's just yeah. It's a. It's in. The, it's in the signs and in the feeling and in the intuition. It's like okay, that's mm -hmm. done. Uh, it was like with the. The Thousand Eight Buddha Project. It had meditated together two years in the cave, all together, mm -hmm. and we were moving. And I said, "Well, I'm not. I waited out. I'm not going to carry 900 pounds of artwork with me." Oh my! And so that was a very interesting feeling to let that project go oh, and wow. not hang on to it. And so uh, I didn't let go of it completely. I took uh, a third of it, but I let two thirds of it go. I gave panels away. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Sophie and I, we went to a park in Austin and we put them out on a blanket and uh, people would ride their bikes or walk by and I'd say free Buddhas and they would go, just ignore me. <laughs> I'd say, a uh, free, free gift Buddha. <laughs> then they'd kind of stopped, but they'd still ignore me. And then I said, took three, three words. It's free gift, complimentary Buddhas. And then they would stop <laughs> and they would, they would receive them. Okay. Some of them would. Uh, there was one guy with a, he had his cowboy hat on and a big cross on his chest. And uh, he said, no, I can't take one of those. And, uh, you know, it was against his religion. And I said, oh, this, this is an art project. But he wasn't open to it. But there were a lot of very interesting things of people receiving to receive art or receive something into their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there was one little guy, he came back, he was on his bike. He said, can I take two? And I said, sure. And he comes back and he says, oh, can I trade this one for that one? He was like this, <laughs> like he was a curator of <laughs> art. And I said, well, uh, do you do art? He says, yeah, yeah. I." I I do drawings, and I said uh, he says then then I put him in the drawer and I said well I tell you what you can have another one if you promise me that you'll hang all your art on the wall because too much art is hidden away and I said it needs to be put out there it needs to be hung up and he said okay I'll hang them up so it was. Uh, just a lot of different things going on in that letting go process mm -hmm. and letting the Buddhas go out into the world then and uh, they're in many different places. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you've let go of all of them now? No, I've got some still in uh, in our home. I have a third of them, but two thirds are out making a difference in the world that way. 
and Amen. some are meditating. It's much like what monks do. Some are in the monastery <laughs> meditating on our behalf and some are out in the world uh, serving others. And so that was my um, impermanence. Impermanence. I wasn't, you know, okay. it was a wonderful project, but it was all about impermanence. This, this too changes. The project changes. Let go of it. <clears throat> and then it opens up for something new to come in. Mm -hmm. Well, your your life, the journey you just presented is certainly an example of that. Like from one, I just couldn't, I mean, to follow you, it's just sort of one after the other of sort of huge steps, inspirational, <clears throat> and then on to the next and on to the next. It just, mm -hmm. it just, uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a journey and it's uh, been a, a real awakening and eye opener and a lot of fun with my, with my play buddy. Oh. Wow. Uh, yep, can Sophia. You hear, can you hear me? Mm hmm. Um, I noticed that um, many times people ask us this question that how do you know when to move on? Mm. And um, um, I feel that um, when Steve and I, we got together, the children were um, eight and 11, and we decided that we want to stay close to them in Canada at that time. So it felt like we kind of set a time frame. And when that time frame was that they were 18, then uh, we decided to move to the state. So it felt feeling to me when uh, the question comes, how do I know when to move on is um, there is uh, some kind of a goal setting, but with very flexibility. And then another thing what I noticed in this um, kind of moving, moving on that um, both of us are um, very intuitive and kind of paying attention what coming towards us mm -hmm. uh, of kind of signs, like giving us a sign of uh, when to let go and when to move on. And then it seems like that there is some kind of a, a, a natural rhythm in that idea of, uh, of, of moving, moving on, like, um, for example, when we moved to the island, we um, chosen our apartment from the internet and um, we paid the deposit on the internet and we really didn't know where we are coming, but we thought, okay, we're gonna arrive and we will stay there for a year or two. <clears throat> and at that time, the young family had one child and we lived on the main floor and they lived above us. And um, as you saw that for um, almost two years, we were very much involved with the meditation center. So we were not staying there a lot. We were spend more time in the meditation center. So the noise factor was um, bearable. But then what happened in the meantime, that they uh, decided to have more family. And instead of just one child, suddenly they had three children. And so that was definitely a sign that uh, the time factor and 
interestingly, COVID came and we finished the meditation center, you know. So because we we started to spend more time in our house and they had, uh, instead of one child, three children, so the noise factor changed. We just looked at each other and we said, oh, it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, you know, so that's how I feel not now that looking at um, this journey with Steve, I said, yeah, I, I have actually noticed that there is a lot of movement in my life. And usually it seems like every three years we move and uh, the movement, well, I, I say to myself, spirit moves us, but there is, feels like it does because there is some magic, magical components uh, kicks in and then everything is like ease and flow and go ease and flow and go so it's uh, that's how I think uh, just paying attention very close attention what are the signs showing up so that's my answer for that question how do we decide <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Yeah, I've moved many times, many, many times. And, and, I, and I was just curious to ask, well, how is it for you? I, um, I've um, i always found that most of my moves have been um, more as if they haven't been my choice, but a source of but, um, how circumstances have come together that have always felt outside my control. So it it's it's um it's neat to to um yeah hear how it helps me find perspective on things too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always neat. Yeah. Listen yeah. to the voice. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Steve, I'm interested in how you um, hold in the moment these different uh, religious traditions. Like you have the Buddhism, mm -hmm. and then St. Francis would be Catholic. Catholic, okay. And are, are you, you, you seem to be able to uh, work with both without attachment? Or? Yeah, I feel. Uh, there's some uh, good values in many things. And a lot of things are saying the same thing, uh -huh. but they they appear different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so it's, you know, accepting, like for myself, I would say, wow, if St. Francis the Pope would follow what St. Francis did, how amazing would that be? Mm. But it's not set up that way from all, they haven't gotten over their past or healed their past, but the possibility is there. There's examples, there's examples everywhere, like in that Wisdom of the Ages book, there's so much wisdom available, but so many people either aren't aware of it or just aren't using it. And so to see that example of St. Francis and his was about, yeah, building a little church foundation, but not these big extravagant, though at the same time, I'm seeing, wow, where did the artists work? <clears throat> where did the artists work and play at that time? It was around the church and you know, they were learning along the way as well, but <clears throat> it's uh, seeing seeing the beauty in, I feel, in any of those traditions, it's in there somewhere. And a lot of it has been messed up because of just the human greed and greed and hatred. Mm -hmm. And so are, 
are you guys settled in now where you are or are you kind of hoping to change? Oh, it feels very good on the, you know, we're on the moving away from those uh, children and we knew it was a risk, but it was a way to land on the island. <clears throat> and, uh, but to have somebody, somebody above you pounding away. Uh, so we're on the top floor. <clears throat> but ma magically enough, this apartment that we purchased wasn't available when we arrived on the island. It wasn't even built yet. <laughs> so we had to do this. And then suddenly we, we venture out during COVID and this top floor unit is available. And we said, wow, thank you. We'll take it. And so at the moment, it just feels like a wonderful place to be. And, uh, you know, we chose Nanaimo also as well because of the free rides on the ferry and how to get, you know, we could move around that way and uh, close to the center, but not too close. And now with uh, having, seeing the, the gift out of COVID of uh, Zoom and connecting with people worldwide, um, that's that's been a wonderful gift. Mm. So, but at the moment now we've done our first we're on our first road trip after COVID, as we speak, and so we're in Canmore, and I'm looking out at the three sisters and the power of the Rockies and yeah. and uh, you know there's integrating like we moved through BC the small little towns, and then suddenly we were in uh, Banff in the IGA. And uh, the whole world was in there. And it was like, wow, <laughs> I just can't uh, quite handle this at the moment. Right on. And then this week we've had a uh, we went into Calgary, fortunately, the days after they had that plus 10 smoke warning, which was at, at five when we went in there. And uh, we got to uh, meet uh, our granddaughter live for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then again, played with her yesterday in the TELUS Science Center with all the children. It was just like, whoa. It was uh, but just to see that uh, that essence of those of the child. It was so much fun, but it was really overwhelming. It was tiring, not used, just not used to that environment. And then uh, last night I had a a great reconciliation with my son. So there's been a lot of powerful things happening in the last mm. 48 hours. And uh, still, still processing that on the road trip, and uh, reintegrating out into the world <clears throat> physically. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, Steve, with Les, with your journey, um, it seems like there's such huge pockets of such different and overwhelming experiences, and you know. So, do you sense the like the thread? through it all like connecting yeah like the golden thread yeah i can uh, relate to that and uh, that's what actually kept the connection with my daughter 
after the divorce, we did a course together for family. And one of the exercises was, there will always be the golden thread uh, to you. And I think she always felt that. And we we were able to reconcile early on. And now it's uh, a wonderful relationship. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, being in Banff and, and the, the child actually on the, in the park in Banff on the grass, uh, 14 month old, she was able to walk to grandpa for, take the furthest step she's ever taken. So it was pretty magical. Oh, so yeah, cool. there's golden threads there. And now it's, uh, it's like that story of the, of the, the Buddha statue that they covered with plaster to protect it from the thieves coming in from an invading country. And the thieves never saw it. They said, oh, we don't want to take this plaster thing. But underneath, there's like 12,000 pounds of gold. And so, um, yeah, sometimes things are plastered over, but underneath, there's that golden thread. And now I feel that's starting to crack between my son and myself. Starting starting to see the gold, the prospecting <laughs> gold story. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Perseverance furthers. Yeah. And patience. Yeah. So how's Barbara doing there? Oh, you're muted. That's why I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Yeah, I love it. I love your story. And uh, it. I saw you in the hot tubs. And I did the same trip to Banff and everywhere like you did with my parents when they were still alive in a, a, a mobile home. So I was like remembering with my parents, mm. you know, they're gone. But when you guys were sitting in the hot tubs, I said, oh, my God, mm -hmm. that was the best decision I made in my life to take them from one hot tub to the other. Because you guys looked so relaxed. <laughs> mm -hmm. You really looked like in joy. And we did too. Mm -hmm. It was just so beautiful on this campgrounds. And and then go into the hot tub and be in the mountains. And yeah, wonderful trip we had. So oh, your good. trip, uh your trip really re revitalized this experience with my parents. Mm. So yeah, that's like uh, a golden thread or something which was plastered over by life mm -hmm. uh, that you forget about it, you know, but seeing your faces there in the water and the surroundings, I said, oh my God, how beautiful was that? How much did we enjoy that moment and this time? And so many other people also come to this place and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, the air, everything, the yeah. smell, the smell of the pine trees. And yeah, it was all there right away. And this lovely, you know, no, no, it, when you get into this hot uh, springs, this moment of getting in and not being uh, cold. <laughs> I so enjoy that, you know, whenever you go into the sea somewhere, you have to overcome that moment of cold, coldness, but not in hot tubs. Mm -hmm. oh, not hot tubs, no, hot springs, sorry. Yeah, I put and that And we came title. to know people. You talk to people there, you know, people talk, they sit there in the hot, hot springs and they talk to each other. Mm -hmm. I put the heading of uh, heaven on earth for that picture and it just, 
reminds me of what's possible, of what we we can create. Yes. What, what yes. beauty could, what beauty can be created? Yes, and uh, how Everywhere. simple, how simple uh, heaven on earth is in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's also the state of Buddha. You you were talking about before, which you had sort of experienced through all your Buddha figures. I could really relate to that because they're all aspects of Buddha. Everyone mm -hmm. is an aspect of a Buddha. Right. And it's so beautiful. Yeah, I love it. So, um, yeah, that you gave them away was also very good, I think. I had the same experience with my art because I had, to, I was painting for people, you know. It's like the worst thing ever you can do, actually, as an artist because you paint what they want. Mm. But then... Uh, it gives you exercise. You know, I would have never exercised so much, but I got paid for it. <laughs> so, and and it got spread over the world. So it's also a very, it's a very a very good schooling in the same way you get paid. Mm -hmm. Well, because you talked about the artists, you know, and not getting paid by the church or anything. You get mm -hmm. paid by people who want your stuff mm -hmm. or trust in you that you can paint something they would like to have. Mm -hmm. Like you encounter with this guy who traded three times your Buddha, his Buddha in <laughs> mm. until he, he really made, he said, okay, I'm satisfied now. Mm -hmm. Really nice. It's a nice experience you had there with the Buddhas, and it's a teaching. Actually, it was it felt to me like life is teaching us something in this etapas or or this uh, sequences, like uh, Dwayne uh, just said. So yeah, it's it, very it's, fascinating it's to see school. that it's a school, no? It's yeah. like your school. Yeah, it was seeing the the trust or the mistrust that people had in the fact that we were giving away free Buddhas. You could just tell they're going, "What's the what's the catch, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's people want to pay. What's the marketing? Yeah. What's the marketing ploy here? And so yeah. it was all this built up mistrust about somebody providing something like that yeah <clears throat> yeah that's true but it's interesting also did this uh hotel service because i was also working in a hotel at the reception it's a really humbling job isn't it <laughs> it's nice it i like it i liked it but sometimes it's also you had to sort of take a lot of uh problems and you had to sort of solve it in some way so they're happy yeah. and uh, exchange something in the ways they wanted it. So it's also like a, a schooling. And when great. you see yeah, a profession was... like that, it's great. Yeah, we had 136 rooms and every night I felt like the mayor of a small town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and you know the extra cushions and the extra tea, and uh, yeah. I don't know what what people like. You know, they have so many likes yeah. that you well, sort of have to keep up with it. What's been fascinating when I was serving in a in the meditation center, um, there was a gentleman there who was actually he was would be the lead. Uh, at the time and he just said to me just give it to them just give yeah. it to them yes and i said yeah why do i have to go through all this reasoning in my mind why they should have it or not or should exactly. they have it you know they're supposed to be meditating they should they don't need they don't need five blankets uh, just give it to them 
I said, wow. It's true. That was powerful. That's a good teaching. Mm -hmm. So I just went from that at the front desk afterwards, and it was really fun to find a commercial business that was all about giving service. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, one example, the guy came to the front desk and he said, oh, man, I have a meeting in the morning and I don't have any black socks. I brought white <laughs> socks and he's got his suit. And oh I was just going God. off shift and I was two blocks away. I said, uh, I've got some. I'll go home and I'll come back and they'll be at the front desk for you. And, uh, you know. Yeah, he, that's magic. <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote a letter. And uh, the owner of the company uh, mailed me three pairs of black socks. <laughs> <laughs> How sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like and the, cre the creative ways to give. Yeah. How can I give? Yeah. So that was really, really fun experience. And was it really called Hotel California? Hmm? Oh no, no, no. No, that was just my analogy. <laughs> because it was a it was the Hilton. It was the Hilton in the Henderson. So because was I in, was wondering, because I was in Mexico in a Hotel California. Yeah, I that's thought, where well, it was in Baja. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought, well, are there more Hotel Californias? <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that was my uh, my staging at the front desk at the, <laughs> the Hotel California. Yeah, it's a very and, good one. And the hallway there that was just just a plethora of color, like yeah, yeah wonderful. Is that the Hotel California. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Oh goodness, it was the color was just explosive everywhere. Yeah. It was the uh, and that the, statue of the the angel in the middle. It was just. Beautiful. beautiful, beautiful. My goodness, the energy there was just mm -hmm. explosive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Steve, I know you're you're teaching using Zoom, mm -hmm. right? Any other projects uh, coming up? Uh, no, that's the main focus at the moment with. Uh, just being able to do this uh, coaching work and with uh, more and more pods. So, and they're called pods. Oh, cool. It's quite fun. And uh, I know I've completed uh, two pods so far. And uh, then when we get back, I'll create some more and then um, just go from there. So what's involved in creating a pod? What? Uh, I just offer it out to to people that want to take the course, the six week course. Oh, okay. And then when they say yes, uh, and it's an interesting thing. We talked about that, about value, and giving something away for free, you know, and there's coaches out there that are, are they need to make a living, but fortunately we're in a position of, not having to do that, but to get this out to uh, out to the world, just like getting the Buddhas out to the world. Right. And, and so, in doing that, um, it gives. It's been helping people turn their lives into more positive um, situations instead of. Uh, the voices of the saboteurs. So then there's there's the core course, which is six weeks. And then after that, then there's a grow portion where a person can stay and grow. But then um, that costs us money. So we just charge what we're charged if people want to continue in the grow. Hmm. So... It's not a money making thing, but it's a um, 
just being in service really. for people to 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 find a, a a new doorway to go through. And is it based on Buddhism, Steve, or what's the kind of the umbrella, or what's the? Well, when we started to uh, watch it and did the uh, coaches course, we could certainly see the teachings of the Buddha in it, but it's not, there's no, no verbiage that way. But it's, I mean, when I, I showed the picture of the, the first, the scientist, the Buddha science, it's all, it's all that teaching of uh, what the Buddha taught really in uh, staying in the moment and and uh, yeah so it's you can really see it's underlying what the buddha taught but it's to me i talk about it as if it's if the buddha had computers back then and made it a digital course <laughs> what would it be <laughs> and that's what that's what it shows up as and, you know, those 10 day Vipassana courses of being in silence and no, no, uh, no phones and no note taking and things. That's not for everybody. That's pretty, that's yeah, pretty strong. Tense. That takes some warrior to show up for that. <laughs> and I find this is a, has a, it's a gentle, more gentle introduction into it than uh, the, the 10 day but I you know I love the 10 day and what I learned from it and just the, the discovering of suffering <laughs> there there is suffering and uh, again like I say this is a gentle gent more gentle uh, opportunity and how do people find out about it uh, how do they find out about it yeah through, through me or I have them go to the Positive Intelligence website, which is positiveintelligence.com. .com. Yeah. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you guys want to create a pod, we can do that too. <laughs> yeah, cool. Hmm. <laughs> A door opens, another door. Yeah. So um, you trade, no, you didn't even trade with Sophia for being a presenter. I, I, I couldn't remember how you ended up with both slots. <laughs> well, yeah, Sophia, so, Sophia was next. Right. And I said, well, uh, we're going to be on this road trip. And Sophia was doing a lot of other things. And I said, wow, I can continue with this Chuen or two moons. And uh, then Sophia will take it from there and everybody else will take it as to who who's next. Yeah. And part of the trading and bartering. <laughs> right, so so actually next we have Barb, right? Are you recalling that, Barb? I know. I know that I have I have an idea, but you have to help me. Yeah. But it's gonna be easy. <laughs> okay. But di but pretty different pretty uh, different. And it's I think it's great because uh it's interesting that everybody is so different, you know. In, oh, we have the different temples. First, I wanted to to uh, do something like thinking about Akbar, but now it looks more like it's going to be like you did, Stephen. It's going to be about my own sign, like the app or the... Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be of the empowered human, so. Mm. That would be you. And it's gonna yeah. empower you guys as well, I guess. <laughs> yes. Because I'm gonna include everybody then. 
so it's going to wow. be more. I'm looking forward to that. And it's going to be simple. It's not complicated. And th th this is what I like also about the Buddhism. It's what I learned from Buddhism is the simplicity. It's like mm -hmm. be humble, be simple, enjoy the small steps. Recognize the small steps even. You mm -hmm. know? Sometimes we are so in a hurry that we don't even... That's when you fall down <laughs> because you missed some steps, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and to make it un more uncomplicated, then life is really more fun, more deeper. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to take you for. Well, so that's for so you're have next one. What's the next month then? What are we in? So you're taking the June? next yeah, the sorry. June. It's June. I've June. got you down for July, Joanne. Oh yeah, and I might have to, well, I'll see. I'm not firmed up with what's happening for me yet, but I've got it marked down for now. But I might have to do some yeah. training if <laughs> yeah, it's, it's if cool. holidays come up. So monkey business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, exactly. We're still in chewing <laughs> monkey. <laughs> Yeah, that gave gave yeah. us a good start. Yeah, yeah. You've really set the the standard at yeah. a, a good height there, Steve. Yeah, oh, thank good. you, thank but, you. And <laughs> as as we know, there's 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 no comparison. It's all uh, all unique. So yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's what's so nice. Say eh? we're all in you know the different temples and whatnot. <laughs> Yes, we're, yeah, so that's what makes it, yeah, unique. We're all unique. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, and also listening to what you, what you want to, what you want to present. It's also, it's also evolving. It's also, it's in the beginning, I wanted to do something totally different. Mm -hmm. Now it changed. And maybe it changes still. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, yeah. Who knows? So it's like you listen to your insight and to your intuition, mm -hmm. and then you pull it out. Yeah, it was amazing what showed up. It was amazing yeah. what showed up in in the creation of it. Exactly, mm -hmm. and and this is the way. Just like that new trickster, I had never really known its story. Wow! And then it's I interesting. discover the new trickster in the in the myth and uh the learning of that and and uh yeah it just all ties together that golden thread where i know i want to help people that are in conflict and here's a story showing how people create conflict in their life <laughs> you wow. you had also a very beautiful picture of a raven talking about conflict because the, the raven or a craw on your car Remember that picture? Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a raven in um, West Coast Indian mythology is also a trickster. Mm -hmm. He's also a trickster. So he's also doing, uh, he stole the soul, the soul, the sun. Sorry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said it in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He stole the sun. Uh, and that was very, very difficult. And he did put it in a box. Do you remember the story? Uh, I so no. love that story. I, I've heard it, but I don't remember it. It's a wonderful story. If you come, oh, uh, if you see it somewhere, it's really interesting because this is not so easy to steal the sun. And that's how people are survived, I think. As far as I remember, yeah, I'm going to reread that because of the trickster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I will too. This, I, this is also on my list because this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Because we are in a trickster time, everything is very tricky right now. Mm -hmm. With all this information and misinformation and over information and under. 
information and left right information <laughs> it's it's the trickster Thank you. And can I ask uh, Dwayne uh, to say a little bit like we're the, actually the new moon we're in here is Eek, Eek right? I, yeah. uh, if I pronounce that right. So we're at the top of the t pyramid. It's the Ooh. seventh moon, yeah. yeah. So can you um, say a little bit about that? Um, or, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, it's been pretty consistent for me through the whole of the duration of the lightning path journey it's been consistent that the seventh moon there's a there's a shift there's major shifts happen it's just the way the cosmic order wants it to be <laughs> we don't have much say in it <laughs> we don't have any say in it it's all about you know how do we uh, orient ourselves in uh, in the basis or in relation to what's what's before us so um eek being the uh, the breath of spirit you know it's like it's it's with us everywhere every every in and out breath is is we're in alignment with that spiritual that that golden cord you know but it's to to if we can concentrate on being aware of our breath then we're going to be really in touch with the cord you know if we're not mindful of our breathing then we're we're not in kind of that present moment the golden thread place that that's kind of my take um i think you know knowing jose arguez was uh, born in the temple of the breath of spirit and he pretty consistently started off every one of his lectures with uh, by playing the flute i always thought that was just so right on for him and his temple mm -hmm. and uh and how you know the flute always then brings us back to the breath, and uh, as Barbara was saying, I mean it's it's really quite simple <laughs> if we if we can allow that for ourselves. But uh, yeah, we live in such tumultuous times, and I loved Steve your Buddha with the all the different media swirling around, you know, and and the the caution to you know to really. Um, not allow ourselves to get overwhelmed by all of that, you know, make the choice to turn it off, you know, right. And disconnect. And I'm finding that more and more as the years go by. And then my eyes are changing, you know, and this mm -hmm. screen time is getting more. Uh, it's, it's an important consideration. Is, should I really be at the screen right now or not? You know, and uh, yeah, there's other choices as well. Other choices. It's so much about choice. And yeah. uh, and that's where that flame is surrounding him, surrounding me and protection. Protection, yeah. Protection from it. And I need to do that. And it's something that we can only get to by going within. There's it's nothing about what's outside. No, nope. it's, it's all out there. And it'll always be out there. And uh, it's in we, communication. We need to, we need to guard, it? guard our senses. And Sophie and I often talk about how how do we function in the dysfunctional world? Yeah, because it is suffering. There's no question. There's suffering. There's misery. That's a given. And how do we function in that? And it's protecting protecting ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. In the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that gives a lot of possibilities. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to go soon. Um, I'll maybe just disappear or is it closing or what kind of time frame are 
is everyone else on yeah i'm it seems like it's timeless <laughs> so, so what i'll i'll just then i'll just say uh, thank you steve that it was just so inspirational i mean both journeys here both uh, so inspirational i'm so uh, mm. uh grateful to have um, been on the journey with you and uh yeah and and thanks yeah, thank you yeah thank you for showing up and, yeah and thanks to Wayne and just nice to be part of this pod so mm -hmm. I will I will leave you all in, in blessings mm -hmm. thank you. bye thank you have a good month <laughs> yeah thank you and it's see uh, and it's Barbara next month right yeah okay. yes okay okay <laughs> look forward to it. okay bye all bye bye, bye, -bye. bye. 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 <clears throat> so did you get any smoke your way, Dwayne? We did. A um, couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then the nice wind came up and away it went. Oh, good. We're back to clear skies. How is it over there? Uh, we can now see the mountains. Oh, good. Yeah, it was like, it was so much we couldn't even see them. But oh, yeah. uh, we were able to avoid that, like I say, the, the, the 10 rating of... Uh, dangerous smoke in Calgary. We went in and it dropped to five mm. with the wind. So, and we stayed out of it, but uh, it's very, I'm seeing it's very symbolic. It's like um, meeting my son the day before it was a 10. And uh, when we met, it's a five and it's like clearing the air. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. Clearing the air, and it's not quite totally clear, but yep. it's a start. Yeah, it's a start. So that was what I was feeling. <clears throat> Clearing the air. Beautiful. Any smoke where you are, Barbara? No, but we had a storm. We had really heavy winds, and mm -hmm. uh, I had to. I, I tried to keep all my pots and plants uh, covered because it was taking everything. It was really sh shaking everything mm -hmm. and destroying all the plants. You know, I'm growing things, so I pulled a couple of things inside because it was like too windy. And um, yeah, a terrible as a terrible wind. I, and it's not I don't go out. It's like really too stormy. Mm -hmm. But today it was great again. It's like back to <clears throat> to paradise, you know. It's like mm -hmm. walking with my son playing Pokemon. It's very it's like doing <laughs> a meditational walk for me. <laughs> Just <laughs> catching some Pokemons. <laughs> It's such a beautiful trip I have with my son. So I can I can see uh, I can feel you wanting to have this beautiful uh, relationship with your children. And uh, I have this really deep connection with my son. He's we have been lifetimes together. And the other day while playing Pokemon, I felt like I I was his. I was his daughter once because he behaved like he he behaved like a father mm -hmm. towards me. In his behavior, he showed me something from a past life or from we have been many 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 lifetimes together. And he's so zen, you know. I'm still not there where he is already. Because he ignores the outside. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this, you know. I'm like, oh, why did they put this here? You know, it's like I'm always complaining about something. Mm. And he ignores everything. He's just not, he doesn't even see it, you know. And I'm still judging about uh, people, how they how they are dressed or um, how, you know, stupid stuff. 
or how how no you know they have this um this rollers now where they roll uh through the town and and very speedy and and you don't hear them coming behind you so i'm i get scared sometimes because they are just going you know they're just flying through through the town <laughs> and you you don't have eyes in the back you know and sometimes they just scare you and he doesn't he 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 doesn't he doesn't move him at all he's so <laughs> in in his world i don't know i'm so curious I'm learning. Is, he, is he a father does he have a no, son no, no. No? no, no, no. But he's showing you the father. No, he does. As long as I live, I don't. I don't see him ever get married or, uh, or even be. He's not even interested. Maybe that's. I should be worried, but uh, I'm not. Because seeing, I think I can. I can feel energy. him already to be so advanced, huh? You're seeing, but you're feeling father energy from him. Yeah, I it's so maybe in in another life I was his daughter. But this life I was always his mother. So I had to mm. let go my mother uh feeling so I could see that I also can have been or in maybe it's in the future, you know, who you, who knows? That uh, yeah. I can listen to him and um, yeah, have a nice father feeling from his side, you know. Mm -hmm. And he enjoys he enjoys playing with me. I never played in my life, never, and I'm playing now mm. because he convinced me. You know, you have to have your kids convince you to also get into uh, on a, on a trip where you never have been. You know, what do I know about Pokemons? I have no clue, but now I know a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's, you know, we have fun and he explains. So he's in the role of ex the, the, the boss. He's the one who knows about it. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's in, like in life, you know, some sometimes in life you're the knower, the giver and the protector and another lifetime, it's the other way around. That's how I feel it. Mm. He's definitely a very, for me, he was always like kind of a Buddha energy. So I don't know if I created it or it's like that. <laughs> but but saying, I'm the, learning from your kids. Hmm? You see the Buddha in him. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. He's uncovered the plaster. Yeah, from the beginning, he was my teacher. Oh, he was my teacher from baby mm -hmm. when he came. He's, he was my teacher. So that could be also like something, you know. Sometimes your teacher gets reborn with you. This is like with um, I told Dwayne that I was with Carlo Rinpoche initiated, and um, he's reincarnated now. And I love that one too, you know, it's like, um, it's a different body, but you you sort of, the soul never disconnected in a way. Mm -hmm. That energy. Mm -hmm. And with kids, it's like that. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you also you also have somebody who's teaching you. Uh, it's it depends how you respond to the lesson. If you have a hard lesson to, then you have to give it space, a lot of space and time, and and like with your with your granddaughter, it's sweet. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you you reconnect the thread or you you fix it via the grandchildren, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I could see this little girl on the grass, you know, first steps on the grass. And how exciting is that, you know? Oh. 
<laughs> and when you take yourself to your first steps mm -hmm. you made because you made it too so we can recall the feeling <clears throat> she's going through yeah she was holding herself up on the backpack it was on the ground and then to see her let go and to Wonderful. see all the balancing that was going through her body mm -hmm. and keeping it balanced it's as she came towards wonderful. me. Wonderful. It was just beautiful. Wonderful. This is an, a new level for her. It's this, mm -hmm. wow, wonderful uh, new level you reach. Mm -hmm. And you reached it too because you're the grandfather now. You were sort of showing so you reached also another level of consciousness mm -hmm. in that moment both of you wonderful yeah. wonderful picture mm -hmm. yeah because i was i felt i was reaching out for her yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just to receive <clears throat> wonderful so when are you going to uh, be back at home? Uh, towards the end of next week. So a little, a little bit more. Yeah. Now we're, now we're headed west, so, westward home. Um, are, are you, you going to meet with, huh? You coming through Spence's Bridge? Yeah, I wanted to ask this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just said it what i want to do <laughs> it's amazing i don't think we'll have the time with the ferry that we have reserved and and the way back through because we're <clears throat> watching the smoke and things but uh yeah yeah they're paving a big section of the highway here too so there's going to be major mm. pie-ups yeah um, is the smoke affecting your eyes, Dwayne? Uh, I don't think so. But, I was uh, wondering because I hate I from my eyes, my eyes are so sensitive. Hmm. And when there's smoke or or I I this is like um don't you feel anything in your eyes like that this is from the well, now, now that I think about it, I, I was having watering the other day in this right eye. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get mm -hmm. that with too much screen time, you know. <laughs> so yeah, um, and you were on the know. on on your boat motorcycle. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh god, I've had some great journeys. Yeah, those are great Charlie. pictures. Wow. Oh, beautiful, uh, beautiful. I mean, he Charlie is is so knowledgeable about the area. He's he's lived here all his life. Oh, wow. He's been to the hills. You know, he's harvesting the traditional foods and. It's just such a pleasure to go out with him. And he's so sometimes he we go so all day long. <laughs> that? He looks so comfortable in nature, in oh, everything. God. In yeah. his body, he looks like he's so comfortable, like a Taurus, you know, like a Taurus, like enjoying uh, to be incarnated, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And these beautiful horses. My, oh, how think, did you... And there was one, the me? markings on the one horse were hieroglyphic. We both tuned into it. It was like, wow, that's a special, special mm. horse right there. Wow. I love this. I, I I hope you don't mind, but I I downloaded them all. Oh, of course. <laughs> because I I love the flowers, everything. <laughs> everything. And I thought, oh my God, this would be nice. And sometimes I, I like it as a background for for in my art or writings. Well, you just I go ahead and use anything in mind there you find. Yeah. Yeah. Your waterfalls I also had as a background already for writing. Thank what, you. Uh, what foodstuffs, <laughs> what foodstuffs did you find, Dwayne? Uh, one, one's called Stwada. It's um, the kind of uh, rounded leaves and they're all, almost kind of like a spinach. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one was... Um, um, chitun, which is the Indian potato. They're quite small, but when you get a whole bunch of them, which there were there, of course, uh, and you've got a meal, you know. 
Wow. Um, then he showed me, um, I, I don't know if you call it a herb or not, and I can't remember the name, but it, it, it only grows in, in a really limited area. And we found it, <laughs> or he found well, this it. This bell-like uh, flower, which oh, looks that like one. a bell. Yeah, that, now that's um, a chocolate lily. And I wow. believe it's this the, is so uh, special. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and it the, grows the only in, in in the it grows only like somewhere in a certain altitude because in the Alps you have that too. Oh right on. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, the altitude factor was really uh, a big part of our journey because down below, mm -hmm. the Stuarta was past its peak. It was it was all getting dried up and and so on. The higher we got, mm -hmm. until we got mm -hmm. that one spot where Charlie, uh, did, uh, I took the picture of Charlie, it was perfect. <laughs> Succulent, Wonderful. easy to snap off, and it got a great big bag. And then the other thing was uh, stinging nettle. Oh, this is so cleaning. This is oh, like tea you should we drink We found now. a patch that was 100 yards long. <laughs> My <laughs> God. It was just ginormous. So mm. it was great. It was great. And yeah, the previous blessed. trip that I'd taken, not on the bike, but uh, with my truck and solo, I, I, I went up to the Bitterroot area that Charlie mm -hmm. showed me. And that's up above mm -hmm. Ashcroft. And uh, mm -hmm. ginormous sky, which I slept under in the back of my truck. Mm -hmm. And looking up and just having the, the billions of stars, it was just so incredible. And then first thing in the morning, I'm digging for bitter root, and I got uh, a really good supply. I'm, I'm good now for a couple of years. They're kind of like <laughs> um, um, ginseng, so they're ginseng. a root, oh, right. and you, you have to peel the outside off. So there's quite a lot of work around them, you know first is, this is digging and then you've got to get them home and then start the peeling and the peeling goes on and on and on mm -hmm. but uh, and then you just dry them out and so they're like little you know dried little roots and i just take one this a day is, during the winter and they're really a good time it's long for a long life probably because yeah, roots are always very for uh, a long life so you sort of clean out probably all the metals Especially yeah. when you have all this burning, yes, going on yeah, around your cool. place, so it cleans out all the and nettle as well. Drink a lot of nettle tea, nettle tea, because that kicks out all the the heavy metals. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Right now, did you take some nettles? Yeah. <laughs> nettle yeah. supply. Oh yeah, we had uh, steam nettles for lunch yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I love cool. this area that way. There's so much in the hills, and it's all about timing. Mm -hmm. You got to get it, you know, right in that window. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then it's gone. It, Next it, will it come, you so know, we started on the, the berries. The cherries will be first, and then the apricots, and then the peaches, and mm -hmm. the, the, uh, uh, the the natives call it shpakpak. <laughs> It's my wow, favorite, it would be so favorite cool. word <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, oh, well, they're That's tart. What's that? They say it sounds tart. No, they're actually not. But they're very, uh, there's a strong taste to them, but it's got a sweet side to it. Ooh. So it, they're, they go down really well. Mm -hmm. And then Schwisham comes after that. And that's, uh, they are, they're tart. And they're much smaller, little red berries. But they make what's called Indian ice cream out of them. It, it has wow. a, you, you know, when you start whipping them up, it goes like a, a frothy ice cream. And uh, you go to a powwow and you're likely to pay a buck or two for a, a cup full, you know. <laughs> wow. And it's great. And, uh, Dwayne, you, can you make uh, something like uh, a little video or something? Because that would be really so interesting. <laughs> you know, right. like, actually, uh, I, I've done that with do Charlie this? before. We, 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 he's a very Please. wonderful educator, and he's always willing. He, and he'll Please. just hold things just right, you know, and he'll just point so my attention, cool. you know. So that's a good idea. This, would, wow. this is ancient wisdom. We need mm -hmm. that. We, yep. people, you know, all the young people, when they don't have anything to eat anymore, 
they have to have at least a video telling them where where to go and find it. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, it would be great. It would be really nice. Simple, nothing complicated, but right. uh, sweet little, um, because it looks so already like a video, what you presented, you know? Yeah. In a way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I try to pack <laughs> as much as I can into my... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm always looking forward. Oh, that's it's great. like, uh, yeah, that's you're, my. You're usually right there. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm not. I'm. I can imagine very much. Like you know, it's like being in the Rocky Mountains. Like also with Steve. When you have been in a place before, you sort of can. Um, project yourself in mm -hmm. into the same space isn't it mm -hmm. it's like a kind of a time travel well you guys remember when i lived in bragg creek mm -hmm. uh, when i had the the little we i had two little cabins on the behind the trading post mm -hmm. well i had no bathtub i had no running water so the the bath hot pools was more Tree, uh, or, um, Susan and I used to go up weekly <laughs> to the hospital. <laughs> oh, cool! Yes, <laughs> it's just a lifestyle, you know. That's just what you do on Sunday. You go with the fools. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was right there with you. Yeah, yeah, just loving it. Yeah, it's super. Yeah, it was yeah, fascinating I'm driving cool. driving into Calgary and then seeing the signs on the highway, <clears throat> Bragg Creek this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, suddenly we were in kind of memory lane, but seeing it new. Right. And uh, <clears throat> suddenly driving in Calgary again and going, oh, and it was like old times, all the street names and things. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Then there's the super highway you never, never saw before. <laughs> you right. have to navigate on. Right, oh suddenly. God. Yeah, Stony Trail. Oh yeah. Suddenly <laughs> going around the I west. I had to drive there too. It's amazing. With a I never really had a, a mobile home. I never drove a mobile home, but my father said you can drive it. And I had to, to deal with it. It's big, you know. Oh yeah. And I had to drive how many times when we went the wrong way, I had to go backwards. And had my father say how to, you know, how to get out of this <laughs> wrong road thing. So, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So it it's uh, it's remembering that you can do things with, you know, I just did it because they, there was nobody else who would drive a mobile home. My father didn't have a driver license. Mm -hmm. My mother, and uh, no. So she would always give signs that I could not see and she had no idea about driving. So they were useless. So my father, at least he sort of more or less helped me to, to navigate sometimes <laughs> in difficult situations. Like in one park, I, it was seven o'clock in the morning and we, we sort of went out and they forgot to put the leather in the, the steps so this the steps would hook up on a table you know this table and seeds which they have in in the in the, the camping grounds you know where you can sort of eat and it pulled this whole thing out, out of uh out of the, out of the anchoring at seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> and i couldn't drive anymore so and we were totally totally it was totally um, mixed with the wood and and uh, and the steps were in. I was like, I didn't know how to solve the problem. So my father, he was he was he had a hip problem. His hips were uh, operated, so he climbed out of his seat slowly, and then uh, he looked at the situation. And then he said, "Just give me the axe." <laughs> So we handed the axe down. We had we had in the in the car, and with really loud 
bang, bang, bang. He sort of uh, <laughs> loosened the situation and pulled out the, the stairs, the steps, and, uh, and solved the problem. <laughs> and we drove away, you know, I couldn't believe it. I thought this is disaster poor, you know. <laughs> but just with uh, a practical Canadian mind, <laughs> he solved the situation. Oh, yeah. It's nice to remember your parents and and now you're That's reminding what... me of my father-in-law from my first <laughs> marriage. He was my mentor. And he, <laughs> we took a trip together with my in-laws down to California in the motorhome. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got into the Napa Valley in California, and I was warning everyone about poison oak. There's poison oak all over California if you get off the trail. Mm -hmm. oh, you don't want to get that. So we had been in the Napa Valley and we had uh, visited a couple of uh, wine tastings. And then uh, I was driving the motorhome and we're pulling into the, backing into the campsite. Mm -hmm. And he's directing me, and I'm oh watching. Him. I'm watching him in the mirror. <laughs> he's directing me. <laughs> no and suddenly, good. with the combination of the wine and the terrain, <laughs> falls backwards into this bush, <laughs> and uh, we just couldn't. It was those, that laughter where you just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We was it poison so, ivy? Was it? We laughed so hard. He, you know, I had just finished warning him about poison oak, and he's <laughs> lying in the bushes. <laughs> oh, no. Wow! And we had a great laugh. But he but it wasn't poisonous, no. It no, was he didn't not, get poison he didn't oak. Get, he didn't get it. it but was. <laughs> he was fortunate. Yeah. Huh. Well, you guys, we're at the two two hour mark. Yeah, yeah. very good. Functional. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank very you. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Awesome. Very wonderful. Thank you. Thank and you. I want thank to you. thank I want to thank Sophia for uh, being out in the hallway in the comfortable chair. <laughs> Have Zoom. a good time, Sophia. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy and keep on enjoying. Yeah, keep, keep on those enjoying. Photos coming. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. keep on enjoying. Don't lose keep it. Don't enjoy. lose no. the yeah. red. Yeah. So far, we are Bye, doing nice. it. Thank you. Yeah. We're Bye working bye. on our mantra. Our, yeah. our mantra, Love if it's you. not fun, we're not doing it. So. <laughs> yeah, right bye, bye bye. 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 Have bye. a good mood. Bye. 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 Bye.